If you ever find yourself in Northwest Montana, go to the tiny town of Polebridge with one general store and post office. It's just a handful of miles south of the Canadian border. Just across the North Fork River to the east is Glacier National Park with its majestic snow-covered peaks. If you are there in January, you can have the unique experience of attending the Root Beer Classic dog sled races. The noisy anticipation of the start of the race sees dogs lunging in their excitement to start their race. Notice that their powerful strength needs to be held back by securing the sled to a snowmobile. The power and desire of dogs to pull is evident to us too when we take our dog for a walk. Traditional dog sledding is magnificent to watch as we see this large team of dogs pulling a sled through the snow. As we watch this musher come through the meadow and around the bend, notice that the snow hook stomped into the snow is to hold this large team of dogs as the musher untangles the dogs. These teams of dogs will race for 25 miles in the Root Beer Classic dog sled race. A helper is needed at the turns to direct the musher which way to go. G is the signal the musher will call to turn right. This same magic and thrill of dog sledding can now be yours in the popular new sport of recreational dog sledding with one or two dogs. Many people of all ages want to have a dog sledding experience, but they want to be the musher so recreational dog sledding is increasing in popularity as a way for pet owners to exercise one or more dogs and enjoy an outing together. Dog sledding isn't just for snow anymore, but with the addition of wheels attached to the snow sled, you can experience dog sledding action in all seasons and on all terrains. Large diameter wheels easily handle the rough terrain of mountain trails, gravel roads, river banks, and sandy trails. You can swish and turn around the curves on a paved trail in a park. Notice the encouragement given to the dogs by saying, good hike.
Grassy trails don't stop the power of dogs. You can use three dogs, but be ready for a fast ride with a lot of power. One dog has a lot of power to pull one person. Kina is pulling Levi along the riverbank as he enjoys the warmth and beauty of the fall. Notice the traditional dog sleds are much bigger and more cumbersome with long gang lines to use with large teams of dogs. Now compare the large team dog sleds we've just seen with this foldable, lightweight, recreational dog sled made of fiberglass filled nylon. This new engineering grade thermal plastic polymer is tough and durable. This material provides for slick runners. The runners have grooves for tracking. And even if small rocks are run over causing slight lines on the surface of the runners, this just helps in tracking. A wonderful benefit is that the runners never need waxing. So whatever the snow conditions are, all you need to do is enjoy your outing. On top of the runners are air bob pads for a secure surface to stand on. The step-on style brake is easily clipped on or off, depending on whether you are using the sled with its runners or the optional wheel attachment. Notice the cleats on the bottom of the brake. These cleats assist in stopping, even in icy conditions. To stop, hold the handle securely and step on the brake with either one or both feet depending on the snow conditions and the number of dogs pulling the sled. A ribbed handle gives a non-slip secure hold. Notice that this handle has two positions, depending on the size of the rider and how you want to grip the sled. The brush bow at the front of the sled is curved to help the sled keep clear of brush and frozen snow and ice. When the sled is in its upright position, it forms a triangle shape. This makes it strong, which helps to ensure a safer sled dogging experience. With recreational dog sledding, it is convenient to have a sled that folds for easy storing and transport. Stand on the runners, hold the handle, lift the sled into the upright position, and the latches will automatically make contact. Check to make sure each latch is securely fastened. To fold the dog sled, put one foot on a runner. Holding the handle, place a foot on a latch behind the seat. Release the latch, pull back on the handle, and release the other latch. Now the sled folds easily down into a compact six inches. It is lightweight, only 19 pounds. The bridle is a vital piece of equipment. Its two straps are attached to the front of the sled under the brush bow. The D-rings are used to hook the gang line to the sled. The sled bridle passes the force of the pulling directly to the runners and the sled will pull and follow the dogs better with more leverage applied to the turns. A dog harness is an important piece of equipment in dog sledding. 
Notice the padding all around this part of the harness. To harness a dog, first gather the harness up in one hand. Next, put the dog's head through the first hole. Now pull the harness back a little and put each leg through a loop. The harness can now be pulled over the back of the dog. The dog's head should fit snugly into the harness, allowing the padded portion to rest on the dog's shoulders. There should be approximately two fingers width between the dog's neck and the harness. The cross pattern in the harness will lay smoothly along the dog's back. The back loop of the harness is hooked to the gang line and the loop should not go past the dog's tail. The wheel attachment that goes with the dog sled makes this an all-season sport. Grasping the brush bow, lift it for easy maneuvering. Notice how convenient it is to store the gang line around the brush bow. When using the wheels, the gang line protector is hooked up first to the sled bridle. This protects the gang line from wearing out as the wheels easily run over the gang line. Next, the gang line protector is hooked to the gang line. Levi is now ready to hook up his dog, Kina, who has previously been fitted with his pulling harness to the one dog hookup. And Kina is sure ready to give Levi a good ride. Remember that if you want to, you have the option of harnessing another dog for the two-dog hookup with the wheels or on the snow. Notice how Levi pulls the dog's collar through for hooking up the neck strap from the two-dog tug. This neck strap will keep the two dogs pulling as a team. Without this strap, the dogs would pull in different directions. The neck strap is attached to the collars. He easily moves the dogs to the dog sled, where the two dog tugs are hooked to the gang line. Each strap is fastened to the harness of each dog. A quick release latch can be fastened to the dog sled when using two or more dogs. Levi undoes the quick release and it's off he goes. The sled stops easily by stepping on the brake pad. The brake for the wheels has an extra friction pad on the bottom of the brake so it will last longer. The cleats will provide the grip to stop in gravel or dirt. The wheel brake attaches to the back upright of the sled and can easily be removed by unclipping the snaps. These snaps are designed so that they can be easily attached or removed depending upon the type of braking setup you are using in winter or summer. To remove the snow sled from the wheel attachment, undo the back pins first. Now use a back pin as a tool to help unsnap the front pin assemblies. Now each of the pins can be removed easily. You will need to unfasten the two pins on the rear pockets and the four pins on the main frame 
before you are ready to completely detach the snow sled from the wheel attachment. First, simply lift the snow sled out of the frame. Now remove the wheel brake whenever you're using the sled in the snow. The snow brake should be snapped in place. Put all of the pins back into the holes on the wheel attachment so that they will not be lost or misplaced. The more times you go through all of the steps involved in attaching or detaching the snow sled to the wheel attachment, the easier and faster it will be for you. The snow sled brake can also be fastened to the front upright. Stepping on the pad in this position stops the sled. When the brake is in the forward position, there is more room to use foot power to assist the dogs in packed snow. In very icy conditions, you could attach the brake to the back upright and the ice cleats would be engaged easier for greater stopping power. When necessary, both feet can be applied to the brake to stop. The sled folds easily and is lightweight to carry and store. In the folded position, the sled can be stored by hanging the brush bow on a hook or leaning it against a wall. Remember, store the sled out of the direct sun. This is important for the plastic products to have a long, useful life. Levi is now removing the brake pad, which would normally be stored with the sled, to demonstrate one of the many unique features of this recreational dog sled. What he is about to do is jump with the sled to show the strength and flexibility of the new engineering grade thermopolymer used in this sled. Even Shayla is impressed with this demonstration. To install the snow sled onto the wheel attachment, the snow sled should be in the upright position. Remove the pins from the wheel frame so that the sled can then be easily positioned into the frame of the wheel assembly, as Levi will demonstrate. First, put the rear tips of the snow sled into the pockets and align the holes. It may be necessary to adjust the sled and wheel attachment so the holes line up. Put the four pins in the main frame with the heads of the pins to the inside so that they will stay securely fastened. Remember that all four pins must be properly positioned and securely fastened because this is the way that the snow sled is attached to the frame of the wheel assembly. Now insert the back two pins in the rear pockets with the heads of the pins under the pocket.
When using the wheel assembly, always install the brake to the rear upright of the sled. Levi is showing again how strong and flexible the wheel unit is. This engineering grade thermoplastic is better than wood because of its flex characteristics. This highly maneuverable, lightweight sled turns easily. Notice how the wheels turn by shifting your weight as you lean into the turn. Even going downhill, the brake stops effectively. The sled turns easily and can be pushed into a new position when you want to change directions or maneuver the sled for some other purpose. The sled bridle can be over the brush bow or under the brush bow when using the wheels. Always use your short gangline protector next to the sled. Now you are ready to snap the gang line into place. The shock absorber in the gang line helps so the dog or the musher will not be jerked. The bungee cord has good absorbing action. To protect this shock absorber, snap the end of the gang line closest to the bungee into the dog's harness. Strong high quality brass snaps are used so that snow and ice can easily be removed from the snap assemblies. We do not recommend that a passenger should ride on the seat in addition to the musher. Dogs are unpredictable and a dog's strength varies which could be unsafe for any passenger on the seat. The seat can be used to carry cargo, and a variety of containers can be attached to the seat. On a long outing, snacks for the musher, as well as water and food for the dog, are a good idea. The seat provides a great place to rest or have a snack during a pause in your dog sled outing. The sled still folds easily with the wheels attached. Hold the brush bow to move the sled to store or carry it. Both the dogs and the sled should be put securely in a vehicle when transporting them. Remember, always shut that tailgate. For maintenance, it is important to check the wheels. The wheel nut can be tightened, not too tight, but just enough so the wheels turn freely. Repeat this check several times and check all the wheels in the same way to help ensure a long life of the wheel and bearing assemblies. If you want a lot of power, you can run three dogs. The three dog tug consists of a three dog neck strap and three long straps. After hooking the gang line to each strap, hook each strap to a dog's harness. The shorter strap that hooks to the middle dog will be a different color. With two or more dogs, use a quick release that snaps onto a strap hooked to the crossbar on the sled and can be easily attached. Now, Keto, Kina, and Pogo are ready for their daily exercise. Hi, hi. 
When harnessing a dog for the first time, you may need to keep the dog on a leash. The harness should be double padded to protect the dog. Double stitching and leather reinforcement at stress points gives a strong, durable, long-lasting, and safe harness. Gather the harness up in one hand, talking to the dog to make it feel secure. Say foot as you lift the foot to put it through the loop. After a while, all you need to do is touch the foot and the dog will lift it as you put it through the harness. These harnesses may be washed in a washing machine and will come out looking like new. Hang the harness to dry because putting it in the dryer may cause it to shrink. Remember, your harness always needs to fit properly. Start training a dog to pull by having a properly fitted harness and a gang line. You can hook the gang line to almost anything, such as a plastic sled, tire, or the snow sled. Run along with the dog, calling it by name. Giving a treat and praise is important to help the dog know that he's doing a good job. During Pogo's first time in harness, he was so excited about getting a treat, he didn't even notice he was pulling anything. All of a sudden, he turns around to see what he's pulling. With a little encouragement, he continues pulling. A sled can be made a little heavier by adding weight to it. Shayla, our black mixed breed dog, is wearing a leash to keep her going during the training to get her to pull. A good training technique when dogs are distracted is to go to the front of the dogs and pull them back to the trail. Direct them to pull in the direction you want. When seven-year-old Larissa wanted to dog sled, she was started out by riding in front of her mother and holding on to the lower portion of the handle. It didn't take long for her to want to go alone. She is pretty pleased with herself at the end of this ride, and she almost forgot to step on the brake to hold the dog, but now she does. The hours spent training are important because you and your dog will enjoy the time you spend on the trail. With a lightweight dog sled now available, the magic of dog sledding can be experienced by anyone that has a large dog that loves to pull. Work in harness is good for the dog and fun for both the dog and the owner. A dog needs exercise and its desire and love to want to go places is key to training a dog to pull. It takes time and patience to teach a dog what you expect. Give praise and approval as the dog progresses because the dog wants to please you. It is important. Jelana demonstrates that you can encourage a dog to pull by calling its name to follow a person on a sled up ahead. Start slowly and as the muscles are built up in the dog and it gets used to pulling, it can work harder. When using the wheel attachment, it is a good idea to wear a helmet, as Logan is doing. He makes sure the helmet is securely strapped. Levi held Pogo until Logan was ready. Have someone down the trail calling the dog. Make sure the dog knows that you have a treat, and he will quickly come to you. As the dog is called, have the person on the sled give the command to start. The word we use is hike. Give the dog praise and attention. 
for that is how the dog knows it is pleasing you. Another excellent training idea is to have someone on a bicycle encouraging the dog to follow. You could also use a car if you are on a safe road. When you begin training, 15 minutes or less than one half a mile may be all you can do. You must train consistently to build the dog's muscles, strength, and knowledge of what is expected. Never let the dog stop unless you have told him to do so. Don't nag him with the starting command. The starting command we use is hike. Speak it once or twice and expect a prompt response. Once he's going, don't repeat it just because he slows down. Reserve it for starting. Your dog must understand no so you can have control over your dog. When you are training your dog, it will want to go off the trail and sniff or chase something. You must immediately say no and hold the gang line and follow it up to the dog's collar. Hold the dog's collar and pull it back on the trail. All the way through training, the dog must realize that you mean what you say. Give your dog time to drink water. If you're on a long run, carry water with you. Consistency is the hallmark of all good training. Most dog training is just common sense. When training or running, do not allow the sled to hit the heels of the dog. This can stop a dog from wanting to get hooked up to a sled. Heat is a dog's worst enemy. During the summer, go dog sledding in the early mornings and late evenings. One question often asked is, what kind of a dog pulls best? The answer is any kind of a dog that likes to pull. Don't overlook your local dog pound to find a first-class sled dog. We obtained our male mixed-breed Malamute, named Keto, from the local dog pound, and we couldn't be happier with him as a sled dog. Almost every medium-sized or large breed dog has been used as a sled dog at one time or another. No one should be disappointed if a dog doesn't do perfectly the first time or for many times. Most dogs will show interest in pulling from the start. Heart, courage, and pulling enthusiasm are trained into a dog. The natural love that the dog has for going places is what makes it possible to train a dog to pull. Dogs work best for a kind driver that will show appreciation and enthusiasm. Many breeds of dogs have pulled dog sleds. Irish Setters won the All-Alaska Sweepstakes as early as 1911. In harness, you can use many breeds such as Dalmatians, German Shepherds, various Terriers, Collies, Dobermans, Samoyeds, and mixed breeds that love to pull. A general rule is a dog can pull twice its weight, yet this can vary with the dog's size and strength. If a dog looks back while it's pulling, it may be a signal to give a little assistance with foot power. This can happen going up hills, through slush, or deep snow. Be aware of snow conditions and terrain so your dog will not be overheated or overworked. Remember, you will need to work with your dog, and this will improve with each outing. Your own verbal cues will teach the dog the behavior that you want. Give the verbal cue just as you want the behavior. 
always use the same commands. Dog sledding has been an important part of history in Alaska and other areas. Alaskans became dependent upon their dogs to help them hunt and herd and travel from village to village. They depended on their dogs for their very survival. The first dog sleds were made of whalebone or driftwood gathered during the thaws. Runners could be parts of the jawbones of the whales and were from 5 to 12 feet in length, but 12 feet was the average. Traditional dog sledding and dog sled racing is very popular in Alaska and the northern states. Many dog sled races are held each year with the Iditarod in Alaska, the world's most famous mushing event. Those folks that are really into dog sled racing find it becomes a lifestyle with the amount of time and money necessary to care, feed, and exercise the dogs. Notice that some of these large teams of dogs are wearing booties. This is necessary to protect the dog's paws because of the great distances they travel in racing and exercising. These booties are not necessary in recreational dog sledding because the distance traveled is not so great so as to injure the dog's paws. In this training sequence, we're going to use the long lead line. One end is clipped to the dog's collar, the other end held in the musher's hand. If you uh, want to use this to assist in getting the sled to go, a uh, person can be up in front with the dog and say, come on, boy, come on, let's go. And when they're leash trained, they're used to that. And uh, the musher at the same time can use the word hike to get them going. <clears throat> now, if you come to a fork in the trail and you want to turn to the left, then you can word, use the word ha as you hold the lead line far out to the left. And also, if you want to go to the right fork, you can hold the lead by switching hands and hold it far out to the right while it's saying G. This gives a little bit of pressure to the right or left on that dog's collar, and they can feel that, and will help them understand the commands more quickly. You can also use this uh, lead line to help the dog learn whoa by pulling back on the line and saying whoa as you apply pressure on the brake. Um, one other use of this line would be if the dog is not paying attention getting off the trailer, you can kind of snap the lead line and say no and, and get the dog's attention and then say the word hike again to get going. To begin recreational dog sledding, all you need is a dog, a well-fitted dog harness, a gang line, and a lightweight dog sled. Training includes keeping the dog in good condition. Train the dog to concentrate on the job of pulling by not allowing it to get distracted by other dogs, things, or people. Consistent verbal cues help the dog know what you want. For a dog to turn, you can say haw for the dog to turn left and gee for the dog to turn right. Always praise the dog for following the command. Use these commands anytime the trail or road turns to the left or to the right. Remember good G or good haw following the successful turn. A cue to begin could be hit it, get up, okay, hike, mush, or another command you like. We use the word hike to start our dogs. Use foot power to assist the dog as you give the command to go. When the dog starts to pull well, say, good hike. Don't use go, because it sounds too much like no. A verbal cue for the dog to stop could be, stop, whoa, or halt. We use whoa to stop our dogs. Again, praise the dog by saying something like, good whoa, Keto. To establish the association between the verbal cue to stop you should step on the brake and pull back on the handle of the sled. In addition to the words hike or whoa, the other three most important commands are G for the right turn, 
paw for the left turn, and on by to help a dog go past the distraction. On hills, assist the dog by using foot power or running behind the sled to the top of the hill. Notice the shock absorbing effect of the fiberglass frame as the sled goes through the rough roads and chuck holes. A backpack strapped to the sled is an excellent way to haul your gear and cargo. Be aware of a dog's size, strength, and condition when determining the load for a dog to pull and the distance you think you may be going on a particular outing. It is amazing how fast one dog can pull the wheels and give the musher such a thrill. Next, Levi is going to demonstrate out in a farm field that when you're training a dog to turn, you may need to correct it. Watch when Levi walks up the gang line to hold the dogs, and then he holds onto the next strap as he shows the dogs the direction that he wants them to go in when he first said the command. An important help to train a dog to use G and haw was demonstrated by Levi when he held his arm out to the left and snapping his fingers while saying the command haw. On a dog sledding adventure, a unique piece of equipment to add to your fun and excitement is an extremely mobile pair of snowshoes. Notice how easily they are attached to the cargo area of the sled to carry them along on a winter outing. The seat on the dog sled is convenient to use to put on the snowshoes. Now, with the snowshoes on, Levi and Lacey are ready for a fun romp in the forest through the snow. No matter whether they're walking, running, or jumping on their snowshoes, they never know what they might see out here in the woods. The dogs enjoy a little change of pace running through the snow as they go with Levi and Lacey. So you can see that whether it's a path in the country during the summer or some fun in the deep woods white with snow, a lightweight dog sled with one or two dogs pulling will give you some unforgettable memories. Discover the magic and feel the thrill of recreational dog sledding. Dog sledding with your dog is an exciting way to get exercise for you and your dog. It provides an opportunity to spend time with your dog and enjoy all the seasons. As with other active sports, safety gear is an important consideration in dog sledding as in other active sports such as skateboarding, rollerblading, bicycle riding, and skiing. Many people of all ages want to have the dog sledding experience, but they want to be the musher. And now, well, it's possible. There is a great adventure that awaits you and your dog in all seasons and on all terrains. Dog sledding with your dog.